Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Moving on to the last subtopic under chapter 5, cellular respiration. So we have 5.2 which is about fermentation and its application. So under 5.2, we have two learning outcomes. The first one explain lactate fermentation and alcohol fermentation. And the second one state the importance of fermentation in industry, which we're going to look on bakery and then vinegar, beverages and alcohol production. And then we want to know about fermentation in dairy industry, for example, in the making of cheese and yogurt. And the last one, fermentation in our local examples, for example, tempeh and tapai. Before we moving on to the detailed process of lactate fermentation and alcohol fermentation, kita recap balik apa yang kita dah belajar before this, okay? So, before this, we have learned about cellular respiration, specifically in aerobic respiration, okay? Because for the anaerobic respiration, this one is not in our syllabus. And then, anaerobic respiration is not same or similar to fermentation okay it's totally different what we want to focus today is lactate fermentation and alcohol fermentation which both fermentations occurs in cell cytosol or cell cytoplasm and then kita akan tengoklah apa organism yang boleh buat lactate fermentation and what are the organism that can do the alcohol fermentation and then for your information, before lactate and alcohol fermentation ni dia nak proceed, okay? Before that, mesti glycolysis dia berlaku dululah. So, means that glycolysis ni dia boleh berlaku in the presence of oxygen or in the absence of oxygen, okay? We have a look first at the definition of fermentation. Dia kata dekat sini, fermentation is the incomplete oxidation of glucose which is glucose adalah organic compound, okay, ada carbon, ada hydrogen lah. Uh, so, dia kata incomplete oxidation means that glucose tu is not completely oxidized ataupun kita kata dia adalah partially oxidized. Kalau kita compare fermentation dengan aerobic respiration yang kita dah belajar before this, aerobic respiration, glucose is completely oxidized, okay. Uh, so, menjadi produk lah. Uh, tapi dekat sini untuk fermentation, dia partially oxidized sahaja. Okay? Uh, so, dia partially oxidized menjadi apa? So, dia akan menjadi carbon dioxide, ATP and ethanol. Okay? Ethanol ni alcohol lah. So, ini akan kita dapat dalam plant cell. Tapi kalau oxidation of glucose yang partially oxidized tadi, kita dapat produknya adalah lactate and ATP. Uh, so, ini berlaku pada animal cells, okay, mostly. Uh, so, dengan kata lain, kalau incomplete oxidation of glucose to carbon dioxide, ATP and ethanol, this one adalah definition untuk alcohol fermentation, okay. Uh, tapi kalau incomplete oxidation of glucose to lactate, Ataupun lactic acid and ATP. Uh, so, this one adalah lactate fermentation. Okay. And then fermentation occurs in the absence of oxygen. Okay. So, tidak ada oxygen yang involved lah in this process. And then the final electron acceptor adalah molecule selain daripada oxygen. Sebab kalau kita compare dengan aerobic respiration yang kita dah belajar before this, Final electron acceptor adalah oksigen. Uh, tapi untuk fermentation, dia berbeza lah. Untuk alcohol fermentation, berbeza dia punya final electron acceptor. Lactate fermentation, lain dia punya final electron acceptor. Nah. Okay, disebabkan fermentation ni ada dua jenis, alkohol dengan lactate, kita tengok dulu dia punya equation. Okay. So, untuk alcohol fermentation that usually occur in plant cell, so kita bermula dengan glucose, okay, satu glucose molecule, C6H12O6, and then this glucose is partially oxidized, okay, ataupun incomplete oxidized, menjadi ethanol. So, kita tengok dekat sini, dia buat dua, in bracket C2H5OH, okay, alcohol ni, and then plus dua carbon dioxide, and then plus dua ATP, okay. Uh, for alcohol fermentation, I would suggest you to memorize both ways how to write the equation sebab dia agak simple, okay? 
And then untuk lactic fermentation kita tengok kita bermula dengan glukos molecule juga satu glukos molecule and then this glukos molecule is partially oxidized menjadi lactic ataupun lactic acid. So dia boleh ada dua cara tulis lah satu kamu buat macam ni ok another one yang panjang ni and the last one kita dapat produk 2 ATP ok. Uh, so saya tak suggest kamu hafal yang panjang ni lah okay. cukup untuk yang pendek macam ni dan yang ni. And then kalau tak ingat dalam exam just tulis yang senang lah yang warna hitam ni ok. Moving on to the next slide ok. Dia kata fermentation ni which is the glucose are partially oxidized in the absence of oxygen yang ni kita dah sebut before this. And then since substrate is partially oxidized, okay, substrate kita tadi adalah glucose, it will only produce small amount of energy. Okay. Uh, jadi kita tengok daripada equation di atas ni untuk alcohol dan juga lactate fermentation, both types of fermentation only produce 2 ATP. Okay. Kalau kita compare dengan aerobic respiration yang kita belajar before this, satu glucose molecule boleh menghasilkan 36 or 38 ATP but in our syllabus just 38 ATP. Okay. Uh, so, 2 dengan 38 ATP. So, ratio dia tu agak besar lah. Okay. So, kenapa tadi boleh menghasilkan sedikit saja ATP which is 2? Jawapannya sebab glukos kita tadi tu partially oxidized. Not completely oxidized. Okay. And then untuk fermentation dia mesti involve glycolysis dulu. Okay. And then follow by the reduction of pyruvate by NADH. Sebab kita tahu uh, produk daripada glycolysis yang paling penting antaranya adalah pyruvate. Okay. Two molecules of pyruvate. Uh, so masa dia nak masuk kepada alkohol dan juga lactic fermentation, pyruvate ni akan kita reduce by NADH. Which is kita dah belajar in ADH ni adalah reducing agent. So hasilnya, okay, masa proses fermentation tersebut, kita akan dapat 2 ATP sahaja both untuk alkohol dan juga lactic fermentation. And then in ADH akan oxidize menjadi in AD+. Okay. Uh, so dia kata kat sini perkataan regenerate. Sebab apa bila dia regenerate in AD+, in AD+, ni boleh digunakan semasa aerobic respiration. Sebab kita tahu in aerobic respiration, in AD+, is reduced to in ADH+, H+. Okay. Uh, so dia gain electron lah. Uh, tapi masa fermentation dia oxidize. Okay. In ADH tu oxidize menjadi in AD plus semula. Okay. And then kalau soalan tanya apa function in AD plus sebagai oxidizing agent. Jadi dia akan oxidize someone kepada someone. Okay. Uh, so kalau dia oxidizing agent dia akan undergo reduction lah. Dia sendiri akan undergo reduction. Uh, contoh in AD plus ni akan reduce menjadi in ADH plus H plus. Kalau NADH punya function pula sebagai reducing agent, dia akan reduce sama lah. Contohnya dalam case fermentation ni, dia akan reduce pyruvate which is produk daripada glycolysis menjadi uh, dot dot dot. Depends on apa jenis fermentation. Okay. Uh, jadi kalau NADH act as a reducing agent, so means that dia akan undergo oxidation. Dia akan loss dia punya electron lah untuk menjadi NAD+. Okay. And then untuk fermentation does not involve Krebs cycle and then oxidative phosphorylation. Okay, so tidak sama dengan aerobic respiration. And then generate ATP by using substrate level phosphorylation. Uh, which is ATP tu dihasilkan sebenarnya sewaktu proses glycolysis. Okay, yang ni kita dah belajar lah. Which is kita recap balik definition untuk substrate level phosphorylation means that direct transfer of phosphate daripada substrate. Okay. Uh, kepada ADP untuk menjadi ATP. Okay. So untuk fermentation disebabkan dia tak involve oxidative phosphorylation. So kita tidaklah menghasilkan ATP secara oxidative phosphorylation. Means that ada involvement of redox reaction. Okay jom kita tengok lagi next slide. Okay. Other definition of fermentation adalah a catabolic process that makes a limited amount of ATP from glucose without an electron transport chain and that produces a characteristic and product such as ethanol ataupun lactic acid. Okay, yang ni kurang famous lah untuk definition of fermentation. Okay, uh, so dia kata a catabolic process. 
Katabolik ni means that kamu nak break down complex molecule kepada simpler molecule ataupun larger molecule kepada smaller molecule. Okay. And then untuk point yang bawah ni kita dah sebut seperti slide yang di atas tadi lah. Okay. 